Mark and his brother hugged each other tightly, only to be pulled away roughly by his stepmother. The father picked Mark up and carried him out of the room, while the brother was tugged by the stepmother in a deadly grip. The brother turned and bit the stepmother before he was able to break free. The brother cried out and chased after him, but the father ignored him and took Mark without looking back. The vicious couple wanted to sell their youngest son because they felt that Mark and his brother had made an unforgivable mistake just a day earlier. Mark and his brother had been herding sheep in the valley. The sun was shining, it was a beautiful day, and the two brothers were going to take a bath in the stream. The older brother took off his shirt, and his back was covered with scars from the whip. In early summer, the water was slightly cool, so the two brothers forgot their worries for a while and splashed around in the water like fish. They didn't notice that several wolves were watching them from the hillock. In the evening, the two brothers drove the sheep home. The gathering of wolves surrounded them. Mark drew out his stick and fought with the wolves. The wolves took one more sheep and quickly withdrew. When the two brothers came back to their senses, they found four more sheep on the ground. The sheepdog was seriously injured. When they got home, they confessed what had just happened, but their stepmother was so furious that she slapped their older brother in the face, and they were punished by being left outside in the rain and not allowed to enter the house. Since the death of their mother, they have been beaten by their stepmother almost every day. The father, on the other hand, is a numb alcoholic, who does whatever the vicious woman in the family tells him to do. The stepmother curses the two children viciously and proposes to sell Mark to the landlord for rent. The father drinks and acquiesces. The two brothers carry the bitten sheep back overnight, hoping to lessen the chastisement. But their father and stepmother had already hardened their hearts. As he watched Mark being taken away by his father, the elder brother could do nothing but cry helplessly. Soon Mark was taken to the landlord's house. The landlord was so pampered and powerful that he could not even look at them without getting his eyes dirty. Mark's father bowed his head in respect. He even slapped his son in the face in order to flatter the landlord. When the deal was done, the father turned and left, leaving behind a heartless back. Immediately afterwards, Mark was taken away by the butler. The butler, like a vicious dog kept by the landlord, was very hard on the tenants. The farmers on the mountain needed a bag of wheat to save their lives. But he refused it mercilessly. The kind-hearted Mark sees this and secretly throws down a bag of wheat to save the little girl's family. At night, the two of them slept in the mountains, but they did not expect a group of mounted police to pass by. It was the time of Franco's dictatorship, and his army and police were doing their best to get rid of the opponents. There was a rebel leader named Baria, who hid in the mountains to avoid the police. The military police and the butler are in the same boat. They both want to capture Baria and collect the big reward. The next day, the two men continued their journey until they came to a cave at noon. A bald grandfather was milking a goat, a serf who had been herding goats for the landowner's family and had lived here alone for many years. The butler asked him about Baria as hiding place, but the bald grandfather just kept his head down and didn't pay any attention to him. The butler made a lot of sarcastic remarks, threw down a sack of wheat and rode away. The butler took the other five sacks of wheat which had been sent as supplies, and kept them for himself. Grandpa Bald sends Mark to count the sheep, and he is full of curiosity and fear when it first arrives. <laughs> Grandpa Bald's cave is inhabited by a swarm of bats, and at the entrance stands an eerie owl, with the sound of wolves trenching in the distance. When Grandpa Bald came back from hunting, he just ate the roasted rabbit and threw the freshly hunted rabbit to Mark so that Mark could figure out how to get it on his own. Mark tossed it around for a long time, but in the end, he didn't get to eat the meat. Until the next morning, the Grandpa Bald prepared a scoop of goat's milk for him. After drinking the milk, Mark quietly followed Grandpa Bald. Grandpa Bald's wheat was being deducted, so he had to set up traps to catch rabbits by himself. The most amazing thing was that he kept a little ferret in the wooden tube. The ferret is cute, non-toxic and harmless, but it is Grandpa Bald's hunting weapon. As soon as it puts it into the rabbit hole, the rabbits are driven to the entrance in a few moments, and all he has to do is to open the net and wait for the rabbits. When Mark sees it, he smiles innocently. He loves the little ferret and respects Grandpa Bald. As time passes, the relationship between Mark and Grandpa grows stronger and stronger. A lamb fell under its hind leg. Grandpa fixed it with herbs and sticks so that it would soon recover. Grandpa roasts a rabbit and Mark gets his share. But just as he steps out of the hole, the wolf steals his food. Mark is so scared that he yells and screams and hides back in his hole. But Grandpa acted calmly and was glad that the wolf didn't eat Mark. The next day, Grandpa learns to bark like a wolf in the woods, which soon attracts a wolf, and then it forces Mark to deliver the rabbit to the wolf. The wolf picks up the rabbit and disappears down the hillside. 
and Mark completes the task with a look of horror on his face. After returning to his cave, Grandpa teaches him that when encountering wolves, one should never turn and run away, and that cowardice can cost one's life. One must learn to look wolves in the eye and even befriend them. When Grandpa first arrived, the wolves were always a nuisance to the sheep, but afterward Grandpa became friends with them. He brought them food, so the wolves respected him, even though Grandpa's teachings were still fresh in his ears. Mark was still afraid when he heard the wolves howling. He sneaks up to him and sleeps with him, and at that moment, he feels happy for the first time in his life. Afterwards, Grandpa taught Mark all kinds of survival skills, and Mark's fear of wolves became less intense. In the evening, while the grandparents and grandson were chatting, a group of people suddenly came, and it turned out to be Barya who had brought his men down. Barya's whole life was fighting for justice, but he was labeled as a bandit by the ruler. The butler had said that if he caught Barya, he would stab him in the throat without mercy. It wasn't long before the group got up to take their leave. Mark asked about Grandpa's family, and Grandpa told Mark with a heavy heart. His wife and youngest son had been killed in the war. His oldest son survived the war. Except for his oldest son, Grandpa had lost everything. Everything he loved. Everything he wanted. He came to this place and has been living alone since then, hiding all the pain in his heart. Looking at his grandfather's sadness, Mark walked to him silently. Suddenly, a few gunshots pierced the quiet night sky and the clamor and barking of dogs echoed through the valley. The next day the mountains were quiet, but Grandpa fell ill. He could not eat, did not want to move. Mark had to go to the sheep alone. In the jungle clearing, a pack of half-grown coyotes is exploring, trying to catch a gopher. They want to catch a gopher, but they have not yet learned the art of hunting. One of the coyotes chased them a long way and saw Mark resting on the ground. The coyote was curious about Mark, and his eyes were full of sincerity and friendship. At first Mark was a little afraid, but the coyote's eyes seemed to speak to him. When they met, Mark was deeply moved. He stretched out his palm and let the coyote lick it, and a true friendship was born. Mark named the coyote Flying Tiger and hoped that he could play with Flying Tiger more often in the future. Mark was so excited that he ran home and told his grandpa about it. But grandpa seemed to be in a very bad way. His illness had come on very quickly, and there was no doctor in the middle of nowhere. Mark made medicine for grandpa and lay in his arms and prayed that he would get well soon. Mark thought of flying tiger in his heart. It tried to lure him out with goat's milk, but the wild boar family robbed him of his food. Mark waited against the deadwood for a long, long time, until finally, flying tiger appeared beside him. The two best friends chased and played together, and before they knew it, it was afternoon. When Mark came home, he found grandpa on the ground with an agonized expression on his face holding his chest, blood ouncing from his mouth. Feeling that he was not going to live long, he told Mark that he was going somewhere far away, and for a long, long time. In fact, Barya was his oldest son, but unfortunately he did not get to see him for the last time. Grandpa gave Mark the wolf's tooth he was wearing, and told him not to let the campfire go out and to live a good life, and then he closed his eyes forever. Mark lost his only family member. He fell on Grandpa and cried bitterly. But it could no longer wake him up. Mark wanted to dig a hole to bury his grandpa. But when he looked up, he saw vultures circling in the sky. These messengers of hell smelled the sin of death. Mark felt bad and ran back. But it was too late. His grandfather's body had already been eaten. The vultures are so vicious that they don't give a damn about Mark. Mark has no choice but to accept the reality of the situation. Without grandpa's protection, it would be difficult for Mark to survive here. Mark lays a trap for many days and finds nothing. Mark follows his grandpa's example of using ferrets to catch rabbits. But even the rabbits bully him. He guards the hole below, but the rabbits escape from above. When Mark is at his wit's end, he suddenly sees a hare being hunted by an eagle. The eagle takes the prey back to its nest to feed its young. Hungry, Mark tries to climb up the tree and steal the rabbit. But at the critical moment, he lost his balance and fell from a tree more than 10 meters high. The impact was so great that he was stunned. Luckily, there were thick leaves on the ground, which cushioned him and saved Mark's life. Mark slowly woke up, but his arm was hurt from the fall, and it grinned from the pain. He immobilized his arm in the way his grandfather had taught him, and it was only the next day that he was able to regain his strength. He wanted to catch a fish, but he couldn't do it with one hand. Hunger, loneliness, sadness, and remorse all came crashing down on him. Mark could not bear it any longer and broke down and cried. He didn't realize that Flying Tiger was watching him from a distance on the hill. Mark collapsed weakly to the ground as the vultures swept by low in the sky, ready to get their meat on. Luckily, 
The ferret woke Mark up and he and the ferret hid back in the cave. At the moment of his greatest despair and helplessness, he found a large piece of fresh meat at the entrance of the cave. Standing on the hillock, Flying Tiger saw from afar that Mark had gotten the life-saving food and then left in peace. A few months later, Mark recovered completely. Flying Tiger was his protector, and every time he hunted with the wolves, he would bring Mark a piece of food. Later, Mark gradually mastered the art of hunting. Catching a rabbit or a bird was no problem. He caught Flying Tiger with a wolf's howl like his grandfather did, and then gave him the rabbit he had caught. The relationship between them grows stronger as they return the favor. Time passes and the years are quiet. In the fall, the butler comes with his men to collect the sheep, and when he finds out that Grandpa Bald is dead, the butler not only humiliated his remains, but also took Mark by force. Knowing that his master is in trouble, the ferret climbs the mountain and crosses the water, finally arriving near the wolves. Flying Tiger then leads the wolves to intercept Butler, showing his fangs. When the butler reaches for his gun, Mark seizes the opportunity to escape. Seeing that Mark was saved, the wolves immediately retreated. The butler had no choice but to stop in order to collect the sheep and go home. But he was so narrow-minded and retaliatory that he waited until winter when it snowed and the butler came with his men to kill the wolves. The ear-piercing gunshots broke the silence of the place. Several wolves were shot dead instantly, and the butler left with the trophies. Flying Tiger was seriously wounded and collapsed on the snow. Mark carried him back to the cave with great difficulty to heal his wounds. They ate, lived and slept together. After several months of careful care, Flying Tiger finally recovered. Time flies like an arrow. Years fly like a shuttle. Ten years later, the weak boy had grown into a strong and swift man. He rode the mountains like a chia, leapt off cliffs like a bird of prey, and his prey had no chance of escape. Of course, Flying Tiger, who is now in his old age, has remained by Mark's side all these years. They have long been like family. Even the fierce owl in front of the cave has become Mark's big eye pet. The young ferret of the day became an old ferret, and if Mark had gotten his hands on the honey, he would have given it a taste. In this ancient forest, isolated from the rest of the world, Mark's heart became one with everything in the world. Free and uninhibited, his relationship with the wolves is raw and pure. Franco's dictatorship lasted more than 30 years, and his opponents were liquidated, persecuted and it like rats. Baria has been a gorilla in the jungle, but the butler, who has a personal vendetta against him, still won't let him go. The butler sets up an ambush in the jungle and shoots Baria in the thigh. Mark hides on a hilltop to get a good look, and the military police follow with search dogs. Baria hid in a cave, and Mark found him and looked at his injuries. Although Mark's language skills have deteriorated a bit after living alone for many years, he is clear that Grandpa Bald Son must not be a bad guy, and he decides to distract the gang of villains for Baria. <laughs> Thinking he has succeeded, Mark is about to get some food for Baria when the butler comes back and catches him. The butler asks for Baria's whereabouts, but Mark closes his lips and refuses to speak. The group of people tied Mark to the mountain hut. The butler seems to have guessed the hiding place of Baria. He wanted to go there in the night to take advantage of the surprise and destroy the rival who has been fighting for years. What he doesn't realize is that the wolves are already on his tail, and the guilty butler falls off his horse and is buried by the wolves. But the next day, Mark is kidnapped by the military police and taken back to the so-called civilized world. Mark's eyes overflowed with tears of sadness. He could not let go of this land, the forests and streams, his free and wild home, and even more so. He could not let go of flying tighter, but he can only yield to the civilized society guns. Forced to accept the choice against the heart, this parting of life and death is unpredictable. This go man and wolf forever, the river of years, has flowed through 45 years in a hurry. A morning full of golden sunshine, in the old Spanish forest, an old man dressed in camouflage uniforms, is shuttling back and forth on the hillside. He climbs up a high hill and howls a sad, distant wolf's howl. The wolf's teeth given to him by Grandpa Bald have never been taken down in his life. Flying Tiger has long gone to heaven to be with Grandpa, but his descendants are still Mark's closest family.